Okay, we welcome you to the Wednesday night Back to Basics Bible Study. Tonight we're looking at uh, Lesson 8 of our course, Old Testament Books of History, Part 1. And we're going to be studying the books of Second Samuel, the book of Second Samuel, chapters 13 through 24. And uh, you all have to excuse me tonight, I have my cap on, because my head is cold. In my office, I have my heater on. Uh, but it's been a cold rain down here in Georgia, and um, I've been uh, fighting the chills most of the day. So we, we rebuke any spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. But praise God, we're here, and so glad to see you. Ryan Trugler, Ryan, come on and say hello. Are you out on the highway tonight? Hey, Dr. Carter. Yes, sir, I'm on the uh, highway tonight. Okay, well, you drive carefully, my brother, and, and uh, you be very careful. You heading home now? Uh, yes, sir, I'm heading home, and uh, God's with me, and he's driving my truck, so he, I know I'm going to be safe. <laughs> he's driving your truck, and your hands are on the wheel, right? Amen to that. <laughs> there you go, there you go. God bless you. God bless you, man. Praise God. Hey, God you. Praise God. A shout-out from CK down in Texas. CK, come on, say hello to us. Hello, everybody. Hey I'm, there. How are you? I'm loving that the days are getting longer. It, I measure it by by Wednesday night, how late the, the, it stays light outside. And I love that there's a lot more hours of sunlight right now. Praise God. Praise God. The days are getting longer. Great talking with you, CK. Always good talking with you. Bless you all. Praise God. Brian Whitaker. Brian, up in Ohio. Hey, Brian, come on, say hello to us, man. How you doing, Pastor? Hey, how's it going there, brother? Going great. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Hey, Brian, I have my Philadelphia Stars baseball cap on. Let me take, give you all a look at this. Oh. Philadelphia Stars. You'll say, well, who were the Philadelphia Stars? The Philadelphia Stars was a team that played in the old Negro Professional League. Long before the major leagues integrated, they had uh, the black players started their own league in the 1930s. And um, my daddy, my daddy p played for the Philadelphia Stars. He played professionally with the Philadelphia Stars, the New York Cubans, and a couple other teams. And so in uh, this is Black History Month, so we want to, I'm, I'm giving a shout out to my dad. Uh, my dad left this world 11, uh, no, nine years ago, nine years ago, shortly before Jackie and I got married. Um, I wrote a book about him. I'll show you. This is the cover of the book. This is not the book. This is the cover. I didn't pull my book off the shelf. But I wrote a book called My Dad the Artist. And if you take a good look at that, you'll say, wow, you look just like your daddy. Your daddy just smacked you out. He just, see, my dad just said, and I was out. Okay? When you look at me and you look at my dad, you'll say, well, you can't deny your DNA, man. But there's a book, uh, My Dad the Artist, about 148 pages. And my father, after he... Um, retired from the steel mill in 1957. He worked in the steel mill for, mill for about 38 years. He went to art school, and um, we didn't know he could draw, but he said he was an artist even ever since first grade. The teacher used to call him up, and he'd, uh, with chalk, he would draw something on the board. And so he had this gift that he was sitting on for all those years. After he raised his family, he decided to go to art school, and before my, my dad left this world, he painted over 400 oil paintings depicting black history and uh, the Underground Railroad. In, up in Pennsylvania, he was known as the Underground Railroad Artist. And um, he was well known and well recognized. And so uh, I still have a copy of this book, My Dad the Artist, on... Um, Amazon.com. There are several copies of the book up at our home in, in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. But you can get a copy of this on Amazon.com. And um, by the way, 
any books that you want to purchase from Amazon.com, I'd like to invite you, <coughs> special invitation, I'd like to invite you to purchase your books from Amazon.com via my webpage, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. And uh, we've, set up, we've set up a store on our webpage, and we are Amazon.com Associates. And so a portion of the proceeds go to Back to Basics Ministries. So if you're uh, ordering books, and, and especially uh, many of the textbooks that we use, we order them through Amazon.com. And so we like to ask you, any books, any books, if you go to my website page and you don't see the book you want, then just um, type it in at the top, and, and that book will come up, and Back to Basics Ministries will get credit for your purchase. So we thank God for you, and thank God for helping to grow this ministry. Dr. Gene Bratton, come on and say hello to us. Dr. Jean Bratton, she's coming on, ladies and gentlemen, she's coming on. She'll be with us while she's coming on. We're going to ask Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Karen, we got a lot of Pennsylvanians on tonight. God bless. God bless you, Co-Pastor Lisa. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good, good. Give bless my love everybody. to Pastor bless Larry. You. <laughs> of Tell course, him I that's... said hello. I sure will. Tell him it's cold down here in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. It's a little chilly here, too. Yes, yes. Well, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's so good to see you. So good to see you all. Okay, there are others on, and uh, we'll connect with you. By the way, I have my Philadelphia Stars baseball cap on commemorating Black History Month, and my father... Um, Show, show you again the book I wrote about him about 10 years ago called My Dad, the Artist. And it's a great book. It talks about his life. Uh, he worked in the steel mill. And then all about his paintings and, and, and the work he did as an artist. And people all over the world uh, have his prints and, and his art. As he told the, the story of the runaway slaves, and he highlighted a lot, a lot of the underground railroad stations up in Pennsylvania, uh, places where uh, kind people would hide out slaves as slaves were trying to make their way into into the north, into uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and even up into Canada. And so we give a tribute to him. He played for the Philadelphia Stars. He played a couple years in the uh, Negro Professional League. And um, he played against Satchel Paige and against Josh Gibson. Josh Gibson was a well-known catcher he hit a lot of home runs satchel page was probably the best pitcher ever to throw a ball and in this book my dad the artist i give my dad's version my father's version now this is not leroy jr's version but my dad's version of the first time he ever batted against satchel page and um my dad hit a triple off satchel page it was hidden round rounding third headed the home home and the right fielder still had not picked up the ball. And Satchel Page ran off the mound and tackled my father on third base. He said, no, 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 no. No rookie hits a, hits a home run off Satchel Page. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's in the book, and that's my father's version of the story, how he hit a triple off Satchel Page his first time up to the plate. Well, enough for that. We celebrate Black History Month. And... Um, we thank God. We also have, uh, um, if you haven't received your free PDF of uh, Faith Visions, order that. I'll send you the PDF of Faith Visions. And also, I want to send you a copy of my, a hard copy of my book, The Giants Are Back. And this book talks about how Satan has raised up a, a, an army of giants to destroy people, to destroy Christians, to destroy God's kingdom. Interesting book. You need to read it. And uh, then we have Black Heroes of the Bible, the story of 21 uh, uh, black persons in the Bible and, and, and their contribution to God's story. In fact, we'll look at one of them. I think we'll look at one of them tonight in our lesson. Okay. Well, praise God. But it's not all about black history, ladies and gentlemen. We just happen to be at that moment 
in, in, in our uh, calendar tonight. Well, let's pray. Father God, we thank you and bless you and honor you and praise you. We love you. Guide us tonight as we study your word. It's a joy to study your word. We thank you for your word. I thank you for all of our students. Thank you for those who are on with us live and those who uh, will, will join us um, via the recording. I ask that you bless each and every one, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Gene Bratton, for praying about my health. Cold rain and I do not go together. Cold rain <laughs> and I, Dr. Gene, do not go together. I got to break out my bottle of, um, um, what's that you recommended for me? Oh, silver biotics. Silver biotics. I better got to go back to silver biotics and pump myself with that. Okay, I've been off it for about a couple months, but I still have some. And um, praise God. But we're not claiming anything. We're we're looking at divine health, and we pray that you all stay in health too. God bless you, Dr. Bratton. Let's look at um, Second Samuel chapter thirteen. Um, Dr. Bratton, would you would you read uh, a portion of uh, maybe the first five? Verses of Second Samuel 13, and then go ahead and tell us about this story, about this this problem that Amnon had with Tamar. Okay, Second Samuel chapter 13. Mm-hmm. What verses? What verses uh, go, did you start with? Well, you can take the whole chapter, but read the first five verses. Okay, Amnon sinned against Tamar, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemaia, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all the men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whether shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, 
There is no cause for this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Then the servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamam put ashes on her head and rent her garment of divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. So what happened here is Tamar is raped by her half-brother. That's simple. Isn't that terrible? It's worse than terrible. Um, it's also incest. Um, it, it, there's a lot of facets um, in this story of Tamar and Amnon. And if you read farther, it caused a lot of problems in David's family later on yes, um, yes. with his son Absalom. So I I think it's good to discuss it afterwards. So if anyone has any questions, we could, you know, talk about what happened here. But the story in short is um, she was raped by her half-brother and also Amnon took some really bad advice. It says that his cousin, Jonadab, was subtle. In other words, he was slick. And he had um, he, he had no regard. Yeah, yeah. He had no regard for the well-being of another person or Tamar. How this would impact the family. Um, if if you have a friend, your friend should actually give you godly advice. And the slickster did the polar opposite. There are a lot of slick folks out there, ladies and gentlemen. And, and they will give you advice, and that advice is not of the Lord. And the body of Christ, we need to always be alert, be alert. Stay woke, folks, stay woke, and, 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 and be careful. We find, and thanks, Dr. Jane, uh, we find that when we look at Second Samuel 13, and for the rest of the book, we see triumphs turning into troubles. We see, we see a lot of David's triumphs. We're going to see more triumphs, but now we see troubles. And remember, as we go back to David and Bathsheba, it started there. David sinned against Bathsheba. Yes, he repented, and yes, God forgave him. But as we mentioned last week, uh, sin has consequences. Sin has consequences. Um, uh, a person may commit a crime and repent and ask God to forgive them, but the judge might sentence that person to jail. Um, a lot of people are still serving sentences, long sentences for something dumb that they did. And a lot of us are serving sentences for stuff they did not do. But sin, sin has consequences. And we cannot hide from sin. We cannot cover it up. And here we have Amnon, one of David's sons, and he's got a real Jones, Jones, that's old school. He's got a Jones for his brother. A Jones means he's got the hots for his brother. He's got this passionate thing for, I'm sorry, for his sister, not his brother, for his sister, for his sister Tamar. Hey, we ain't going there. No, 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 no. It's, it's, he's got this thing for his sister Tamar. She's just a young virgin, and she took bad advice. I mean, he's going around looking uh, sad, head hung down and all that. What's wrong with you, man? Oh, man. Man, I, I got this thing from my sister Tamar, man. I can't shake it. I can't shake it, man. It's on me, man. It's on me like a, a coat, man. I can't shake it. Every time I think about it, man, I just lose my mind. I can't. I, I got to have her, man. I got to have her. He was like the caveman. Got to have my sister. Got to have my sister. And so uh, uh, he got bad advice. And he took that bad advice, and then he wound up raping his sister and humiliating her and kicking her to the curb. 
and 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 and, and, and just, just so much ungodliness. But we see, ladies and gentlemen, starting with the thirteenth chapter of Second Samuel, David's situation with his family goes south, turns turns in a different direction, and and it, uh, it can all be traced back to David's sin against Bathsheba. Yes, David repented of his sin, and he repented for having Bathsheba's husband put to death, but sin has consequences, ladies and gentlemen. Sin has con consequences. If you drink a whole lot of alcohol, uh, they, they have this thing called sclerosis of the liver. If you smoke a lot of cigarettes, they've got this thing called lung, lung cancer. And a lot of people today repent that they ever smoked, that they ever drank. But sin has consequences. Dr. Jean, want to add anything to that? Yes. Um, to cirrhosis of the liver or <laughs> David's uh, family? Whatever. Either one. Okay. Um, this cousin of Amnon, um, he was described he he's shrewd and crafty, and when the Bible uses those terms, shrewd and cat crafty, it takes you back to Genesis. The yes. serpent was shrewd and crafty. Another thing we have to think about is the garment that Tamar wore. It sounds pretty much like Joseph's coat. Yes, coat of many colors. Yes. Yeah, she she had the the feminine version of it, <laughs> <laughs> and and just like Joseph was beat up by his brothers and thrown in a pit, he was attacked when he wore his coat of many colors. And here's a correlation here: she was attacked, and she had on her coat of many colors. So, what's the point I am making? It's not a point; it's an analogy. So just things to think about. So don't be wearing those fancy clothes, y'all, okay? There are people jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we find Absalom, uh, he finds out that Amnon um, raped his sister and humiliated his sister. Now Amnon was Absalom's half-brother, and Tamar was Absalom's whole sister and you know uh, they were brother they were siblings and so Absalom plots revenge and eventually he gets to his revenge and that caused the whole thing that led to war between David and Absalom we see Absalom later uh, he has to flee um, he has to flee from from the king and um, he, he stays away for some time. And then Absalom was very popular among uh, the people. He had, he had this nice golden hair, and he was handsome. The Bible says he did not have a blemish from the top of his head to the bottom of his foot. He was like Ryan Trogler. He didn't have a blemish on his body from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Hold on to the steering wheel, Ryan, as you're driving now. And so Absalom was just, he was, he was more than handsome. He was what uh, you'll say about the guy, he was just plain pretty. He had no blemishes. <laughs> Everybody liked him. He was just a, a fine thing to look at. And so uh, Ryan's going to go home and tell his wife, Tara, man, you ought to see the description Pastor Carter put on me on, on the class tonight. Okay? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Absalom uh, had to flee. Uh, after he uh, got rid of his brother, and uh, that meant David and Absalom have it out for a long time. And then uh, we find that um, in chapter 14, Absalom returns after David um, misses his son. Even though his son hates David, his son hates his father and has raised up an army to, to kill his father. But David still had a heart for his son. Okay, so we find in the scriptures David made some mistakes, and yes, he was weak toward Amnon, and he was weak uh, toward Absalom, but we find in the story of Absalom, David just completely broke down and couldn't handle, 
couldn't handle the pressure, even though his son was bent on destroying his father. So we see a lot of drama in David's household, and it all goes back mm -hmm. to that sin. And so uh, the scripture tells us when you sin, be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. Uh, don't wait. Don't let sin simmer. Be quick to repent and ask God for mercy because sin begets sin, and then sin begets more sin. So as soon as you and I sin, and the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us commits sin. You know, you know, um, we're, we're, we're nice little church kids, and uh, we, we come to Bible study every night. But in every one of us, if Satan has his way, we can scheme and plot and, 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 and do a whole lot of stuff. I, I look back on my life. No, I'm not going to tell you what I did. But, but <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've made some plots and some schemes and some things and, 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 and should not have done that, even being saved. So I'm not going to condemn David. I, I just thank God for the twins. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank God for the twins. <laughs> Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. The Bible says, for all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And every now and then you hear of a Christian who does something dumb, something stupid, and then has to do something else to cover it up. And, and, and that means they're in bondage. And you see a lot of this in our book, The Giants Are Back. The Giants Are Back, which a book that teaches us how to recognize the giants, how to recognize the de these demons and how to get delivered from them and how to keep them under our feet. Tonight we're looking at chapter 13. Um, then chapter 14, we're looking at the woman of Tekoa, the woman of Tekoa. And then Absalom returns, and then we see David's wilderness escape. Chapter 15, um, I'm sorry, we see David's wilderness escape in chapter 15. And we see chapter 16, Shammai curses David. There's a, a, one of Saul's relatives. He curses David. And then we see Absalom in Jerusalem. Absalom built up a great following, and a lot of people turned against David because they followed Absalom. Chapter 17, we see Hushai's counsel. Hushai gave some counsel, and then we see safe beyond the Jordan. Chapter 18, David versus Absalom. And David, uh, even though his son was out to kill him, and David, uh, Absalom had an army, and coming against David, David gave out orders, do not harm the, son, not harm the child. David still looked at him as a child. Hey, this is a grown man trying to kill his daddy. But David said, do not harm the child. Chapter 19, we see David's lament, his grief. Absalom, oh, Absalom, my son. Oh, Absalom, my son. And David just uh, cried and cried and cried until Joab had to go and, uh, and, 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 and smack him verbally, not physically, smack him verbally. Hey, look, 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 all Israel is waiting on you to come and thank them for winning a battle against this army that's tried to kill you. And here you are, you're crying, you're grieving over your son. Your son tried to kill you. Wake up, man. If you don't go out there and greet these people and tell them what a good job they did in destroying this rebellion, you'll have no followers. And so uh, that's in um, chapter 19. Chapter 20, we see Sheba's followers. There's another person named Sheba. And then Joab slays Amasa. Joab, Joab is a character, ladies and gentlemen. Joab was uh, David's general, but Joab had some issues, and, and especially his issue with Abner, and, and uh, Joab was one who never forgot. And so we see Joab slaying Amasa, and Amasa happened to be one of the, his adversaries from a, a time back. And then we see the death of Sheba. Then we see, uh, now don't get this person Sheba confused with the queen of Sheba because this person Sheba in chapter 20 is a man. Chapter 21, we see the Gibeonites request. They made a certain request of King David. And then chapter 22, the Lord is my rock. We see a great, I mean, we see a great uh, 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 praise and worship that David wrote 
uh, after God had delivered him from his enemies. The Lord is my rock. His way is perfect. He's the rock of my salvation. I mean, a lot of our praise songs that we sing today and, and songs that we sang back in yesterday, uh, Dr. Gene Bratton, uh, uh, Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson, a lot of songs that we sang in our revivals and services were uh, based on chapter 22 of Second Samuel. Then chapter 23, mm-hmm. we see David's mighty men. Okay, David could not have won the victories he won without his mighty men. And look here, ladies and gentlemen, his mighty men were not Charlie Church boys. No, they were not Charlie Church boys. His <laughs> mighty men were uh, the sons of Belial. Uh, they, they were wicked men. But, and, and David knew when push came to shove, he could count on the mighty men. And so the mighty men of valor are mentioned in chapter 23. And then we see David. Uh, doing something God said don't do. Chapter 24, he took a census in Israel. Uh, uh, He's like a lot of pastors. How many followers? How many people are liking me? How many people are liking me on Facebook? A lot of people spend time trying to build up their followership. And uh, how many members do we have? Well, the Lord had told David, don't take a census. Don't count the people. And David went out and counted the people. And he realized he had sinned against God and he had to repent okay and then we see out of that out of that sin after he repented and praise God that God gives us space to repent praise God we serve a mighty loving God and thank God that God gave him space to repent because after that sin David went and purchased a piece of property in Jerusalem Uh, that area became they built the city of Jerusalem around it And David bought eight acres of ground, eight acres of ground, and that was, that purchase was, he bought the threshing floor of Arona. That floor was used for threshing wheat and grain. David bought eight acres of property, and that property, ladies and gentlemen, was the ground upon which Solomon built the temple. The temple mount is still on that ground that that David uh, purchased, uh, and the, the, the temple was built on that particular ground. And uh, on that same ground, ladies and gentlemen, the third temple is about to be built. Uh, the, the Jews say the third temple, but I count four temples. I, uh, uh, Solomon's temple, then, uh, um, then they rebuilt the temple under um, when, when uh, Nehemiah had come back and Ezra, under Ezra's leadership, they rebuilt the temple. So that would be temple number two. And then King Herod built the temple. Uh, that's number three. So actually I hear many of the Jewish people saying the third temple, but actually it's the fourth temple. Let me bring our expert in, Karen Herzog. Karen, what do you think about that? How many temples were there? That sounds about right. <laughs> Unless they're just thinking, you know, they've repaired the wall, you know, with Nehemiah. Um, you know, that, that may be how um, the Orthodox Jews are looking at it. Yes. Um, We're not going to get hung yeah. up on numbers, are we, Karen? Nope, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. We miss a whole lot of good stuff. Okay? Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks, Karen. Let's turn uh-huh. to chapter... Chapter 15, and it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. So Absalom he set himself up at the gate of the city, and anybody who had a complaint against the king, Absalom said, hey, come here, tell me, tell me your problem, and, and, and I'll handle it for you. And that is how Absalom built up a great followership. He was undermining his father, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this, this guy was heading for gloom and doom because the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. We, we, we ought to honor our father and and our mother, okay? Uh, just like I'm honoring my father by wearing the Philadelphia Stars um, 
baseball cap. By the way, I think Dr. Gene Bratton had a relative played with the uh, Philadelphia Stars, didn't you, Dr. Gene? My dad did, too. Your dad and my dad played on the same team. They were professional yes, they baseball did. players. Hallelujah. Yes. Long before the mm-hmm. major leagues took in Jackie Robinson to integrate the major leagues, Dr. Gene Bratton, her father, and my father, uh, played uh, uh, out of, um, your father was out of Darby, Pennsylvania, I think, and my dad mm-hmm. was out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. All right, all right. Okay, enough boasting on my dad. Okay, so <laughs> Absalom led a rebellion in verse 11, and with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. Now, do not confuse this. The Bible says they were called. That does not mean they were called to follow Absalom. God didn't call them to follow Absalom. No, they joined. They were crooks. They were, they were in rebellion. They joined a rebellious army. And um, the conspiracy was strong, verse 12, for the people increased continually with Absalom. Okay, to make a long story short, Absalom's pretty hair. His long golden hair, and he only cut it once a year because it got too heavy for him. His long golden hair, his pretty looks. Okay, so so Ryan, you got to cut your hair every now and then, bro. Okay, Absalom was riding. It was war. War was going on, and he was riding, and he re- he was riding his mule donkey under a tree, and his hair got caught up in a tree and Absalom was dangling from a tree by his hair. His hair caught him up. His pretty hair caught him up and that's the the information they brought to Joab. Um, Okay. And when they found that out, then they went over and they killed Absalom. Okay, they killed Absalom. And um, then the next problem is, who is going to take the message? Who is going to take the message to King David? And so we'll find that out later. Because everybody knew at that time, anybody bringing the king bad news would wind up dying. David would put him to death. If you brought David bad news... David will put you to death, just like the guy who tried to get over by bringing news of of, uh, Saul's death. He thought he was going to get a reward for bringing Saul's crown and Saul's bracelet, but he wound up getting killed. David commanded that his his soldiers put this guy to death. Okay. So I'm looking for Cushai or Cushi. There's a uh, a gentleman in, in, in this uh, passage we're studying tonight, his name was Cushy, C-U-S-H-I. And the word Cushy, meaning Cushite, is um, parallel with Ethiopian or Nubian. So um, many of my characters in this book, uh, the 21 people I highlight in this book, Black Heroes of the Bible, were Cushites or Ethiopians or Nubians, um, and and their geneal- genealogically they were black. Okay, even even one of the priests uh, uh, in Israel had had blacks in his background, and we're talking about Phineas. So you got to get a copy of this book and and check it out, read it uh, very carefully. I put a lot of study and and work into this, and um, it will bless you. And so when Absalom was killed. They had to find somebody to take the message to the king. And um, one man volunteered, and Joab said, no, 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 uh, I can't let you do this. I can't let you do this because, you know, anybody bringing the king bad news is going to be slaughtered. He's going to be put to death. And so um, Joab picked out somebody, and and this somebody that Joab named was a guy named Cushy, C-U-S-H-I. And when I studied Cushy and found his background, he was a Nubian or Ethiopian or a Cushite. And he, he uh, drafted Cushy. Cushy was also a runner, a long-distance runner. 
So Cushy took the message to the king about the death of um, of Absalom. Let's turn to to chapter eighteen. Starting with verse 19, then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, let me know, let me now run and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. No, he told Ahimaaz, you can't take this news to the king, because the king will kill you. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings because the king's son is dead. Joab knew that whoever took this, <laughs> it's funny, it's funny. They picked on Cushy. They picked on the brother. They picked on the brother. Okay. Then said Joab to Cushy, verse 21, go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushy bowed himself unto Joab and ran. Ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of funny when you know the background of the story and you read it. Okay, it is uh, kind of funny to me. Ahimeaz, no, he couldn't take it. No, because uh, Joab knew whoever took the news to the king was going to be put to death. And then Joab turned, looked over his troops, and he saw Cushy. You got to read about it. It's it's more. It's the the story is is, is uh, really flowered in this book, uh, Black Heroes of the Bible. Poor Cushy. Joab looked at him and said, "You go tell the king what you've seen." And Cushy bowed. And so, and started running. Then said, verse 22, Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, but howsoever, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushy. And Joab said, wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, run. Then Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain, and he overran Cushy. So Ahimeaz was determined to get a message to the king. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running. And the watchman cried and told the king. And the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, Another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimeaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God which hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimeaz answered, When Joab, <laughs> this is how he answered, ladies and gentlemen, When Joab sent the king's servant and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. Uh, so, so hey, hey, Ahimeaz was not stupid. He gave the king a very diplomatic, he gave him a political answer, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when Joab sent your, your servant out to run to the king, I saw a great tumult. I saw a scuffle. I saw things happening, but I don't know what was happening, but he to just told me to run to the king. <laughs> Verse 30, and the king said unto him, turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. Verse 31, And behold, Cushy came, and Cushy said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushy, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushy answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. Cushy said, All your enemies who rise up against you, let them be as that young man is. In other words, he's dead. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And he went, thus he said, and as he went, thus he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 
I, I, I can't imagine what that must have felt like. And, and, and uh, some of you have, have, may have lost children, and, and uh, there's no way anybody can explain grief. But David took it hard. Oh, my son Absalom, even though Absalom was out to kill him, David took it hard. And by the way, David did not kill Cushy. David surprised everybody. He did not kill Cushy. He did not kill Ahimeaz. Chapter 19, and it was told Joab, Hey, Joab, look, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. Verse 1. Verse 2, and the victory that day was turned in the morning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city as people were being ashamed, steal away when they flee in battle. So the people were ashamed of the king for crying out for his son. And his son was trying to kill him. And his son was causing all the havoc in the, in, 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 in the country. And so they killed his son. And so the king is more in mourning for his son than he is to congratulate the army that won the battle over Absalom's army. And so many people shamefully stole away from the king that day. But the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Verse 5, And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all that we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. I mean, he laid it on David, ladies and gentlemen. He laid it on the king. Now therefore arise, Absalom said, verse 7, Go forth and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth unto now. Joab tells David, if you don't get up and stop this crying, and this boo-hoo and a bawling and squalling. Yeah, you're in grief, but if you don't go and congratulate this army and solidify this army, you will not have an army. Everyone will leave you. Verse 8, Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he's fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore we speak ye not a word of bringing the king back. Okay, so uh, all those who had followed Absalom now, they want to get back in the kingdom. Uh, people know where, what side their bread and butter is, what the side their bread is buttered on. And so, and King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar, the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel's come to the king, even to his house? And so David says to the priest, How come you all have not called me back to be your king? In other words, David was threatening them. They knew, they knew that if they didn't honor David and call him back and, 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 and ask David to forgive them for following Absalom, and, and uh, that David would bring uh, uh, not, no mercy upon them. Okay, so we see David making overtures to Judah, and the princes of Judah return to David. Okay. And Shimei, 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 verse 16, the son, I'm in chapter 19, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was a Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his 15 sons, and his 20 servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. So David is, uh, once again, he's come back to Jerusalem, 
and he's solidifying his arm, he's solidifying his strength. But there had been a point in time where David had to flee Jerusalem. He had to leave some of his concubines there, and uh, Absalom, uh, they, they built a tent on top of uh, David's house, and, and, and by false advice, uh, Dr. Gene, false advice, they advised Absalom, sleep with your father's concubines. That will further yep. humiliate your father, and that will also get more people in Israel to follow you. And Absalom actually slept with the ten concubines of his wife that were on the roof of David's house. So we see a lot of shrewd conniving going on in, in the scripture. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, the rest of this chapter is David solidifying his, his people, bringing them back together. Uh, there's a man here named um, Zeruiah, Zeruiah, and he's very important, a, f a very important follower of David. David want this, wanted this man to follow him. Uh, there's a man named Barzillai, Zeruiah and Barzillai. Okay, verse 31, and Barzillai, the Gileadite, came down from Rogalim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. He came down to escort King David over the Jordan. Now, Barzillai was a very aged man, even 80 score years old, and he had provided the king of sub substance while he lay at Mahanaim, Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. But the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live? that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem. I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more of the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? So Barzillai, uh, he's not like Caleb. Caleb said, I'm 85 years old, 40 years ago. Uh, we spied out this land. Forty-five years ago, we spied out this land, and there were giants there. Give me this land, he told Joshua. Uh, there are still giants here, and I will drive them out. But Barzillai was much different from um, um, Caleb. Barzillai said, look, man, I'm 80 years old, man. I'm old as dirt, man. I can't even enjoy the voice of singing men and singing women. I can't taste that good food you're eating, and, and why should I come and sit at your table? David wanted him to live in Jerusalem uh, with him and his people. Barzillai I said, no. Verse 37, let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city and be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. But behold, thy servant, Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king, my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good to him. So David agreed to that, okay? The old man said, no, I'm too old to be following you, David. I'll escort you across the Jordan, uh, but then I'm not going into Jerusalem. Uh, I'm too old for that, okay? But I have a, a young man who can, who can go with you. Okay, we see in chapter 20 of Second um, Samuel where Joab killed Amasa. Now, this thing went way back, way back. Amasa was one of Abner's brothers, and Joab eventually had killed Abner, and now Amasa was one of Abner's brothers, and, 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 and they had, I mean, there was blood, bad blood between Saul's general Abner and David's general Joab. And so uh, Joab uh, never forgot. Okay? And so... And there happened to be there a man of Belial. Belial means he was, he, 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 was, he, was, he was satanic, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, the, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. And when they said, Every man to his tent, that meant go and get your weapons because we're going to fight. So every man of Israel went up from after David, and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan, even unto Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, 
and put them inward and fed them and went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the way, unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. David didn't forget either. Uh, these women uh, had slept with uh, uh, Absalom while David was on the run. Then the king said to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So they raise up an army. Okay. And there went out, verse 7, after him Joab's men and the Carathites. So Sheba, now shall Sheba, let, let me go back. And David said unto Abishai, verse 6 of chapter 20, Now shall Sheba, the son of Bichri, do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servants and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and all the mighty men, and they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. Okay, and Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health? Joab was a shrewd, slick dude. Joab met Amasa, his bitter enemy. Joab said, verse 9, to Amasa, Art thou in good health, my brother? Or in other words, uh, sh Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, peace be to mm -hmm. you. And Joab took a master by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. He's going to kiss him. Yeah, okay, that's how they greeted one another. They took him by the beard to kiss him. But a master took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody going to grab you by your beard. Well, you ladies don't have a beard. Somebody going to grab you by your chin to kiss you. You better watch what's in their other hand. Okay. Okay, and by the way, you guys, if somebody grab you by your chin to kiss you, you back them up, you back them up, you back them up. Okay, verse 10, but Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him again, struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favoreth Joab and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the men saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field. The men stopped moving. The army stopped moving. They're looking at this guy laying down in the field. So they moved him over to off the highway into a field, okay? When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri, okay? And so they pursued, and they eventually caught up with him. They killed Sheba, okay? Sheba, remember, he had plotted against David, okay? And so... Verse 22, then the women went unto all the men in there. Okay, they went to a city, and Sheba was hiding in this city. And so the army of Israel came to the city. And verse 21, and the woman said unto Joab, behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. In other words, a lady pleaded with, with, with all the, the Jewish army, why should a whole lot of people be dead? You're after one person? You'll see his head when we thaw it over the wall. Verse 22, Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. She was a very wise woman. And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Okay, so that ended Sheba's rebellion against the king. In chapter 21, we have a request from the Gideonites. Okay. And there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel. 
When David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement? That ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We shall have no silver nor gold of Saul, of Saul nor of his, his house. Neither for us shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coasts of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth. So there were some of Saul's relatives. David rounded them up, and he turned them over. But not Mephibosheth, who was the son of the crippled son of Jonathan. Verse 9, And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of the barley harvest. Okay. Chapter 22. Read it when you can. Read it. It is so beautiful. Um, David had uh, put a lot of his enemies under his foot. And uh, even though he had sinned and had a lot of troubles, now he had rest from his enemies. Chapter 22, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson, you remember. Dr. Jane Bratton, you remember. In Chester, Pennsylvania, we would sing We would sing this verse, number four. Yeah. We'd sing this in some of our worship and praise services. Verse four. Mm-hmm. I will call upon the Lord. Yes. Who is worthy to be praised? Yep. So will I be saved from my mm-hmm. enemies? Then we would add to that: The Lord liveth, and blessed be the Rock, mm-hmm. and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah, one of our praise songs. Okay, uh, verse 7, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. You all read this, okay? Read this, and you'll see a lot of praise and worship in this chapter. Verse 18, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. I mean, when you read this 22nd chapter of Second Samuel, I mean, you see that our God is a mighty God, and he defends his people, and he will deliver his people. Praise God. But you read this for yourself, okay? All right. Um, verse 33, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord, and who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. Praise God. You get a lot of praise out of this chapter. A lot of praise. Hallelujah. Once again, uh, verse uh, 47, we added verse 47 to the verse where we uh, said, I will, we added verses 4. And verse um, 47, and we had this praise song. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Then we tacked on verse 47. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. And let the God of my uh, salvation be exalted. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, we didn't have a band, Karen. We didn't have musicians, Karen. We didn't even have a piano player, Karen. We had an old upright piano in the church, and every now and then somebody would come and play the piano. But most of the time, we did not have music. We had a drum, and, and, but we had a cowbell, a couple cowbells, Karen, 
and some drumsticks. Mm -hmm. And this pastor, I'll be beating on my cowboy. <laughs> and then the people would clap their hands. Karen Herzog, you tell Pastor Allen, you don't need a whole lot of music. Tell them the music is in the people's feet. Tell them, That's Karen, right. the music is in their hands. And so we get the we get the rhythm, pat our feet, and we clap on the off beat. And when the foot went down there, we clap the hand like foot, clap, foot, clap, foot, clap, clap, foot, clap, foot, clap. I will call upon the Lord. Foot, clap, foot, clap. Who is worthy to be? Clip, foot, clap, foot, clap. Then the cowboy. Then, 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 foot, clap, foot, clap, foot, clap. Then, boom, boom, boom. Then, 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 boom, boom, boom. Somebody beating the drum. Then you had the whole. I mean, everybody brought some music. If you had hands, you could clap them. If you had feet, you could pat them. And we'd sing these songs. We'd sing scriptures. And then before long, before long, Karen, hey, Karen, before long, the glory cloud will come upon the place. The yeah. glory of the Lord will fill the house. And then, and then we get a, a sermon and, 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 and the message of then God, will, uh, because of the glory of the Lord, the presence there and the praise. And then God will say, now lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on the sick. And, and Pastor Lisa, when we laid hands on the sick, what happened? It was awesome. Just people was getting healed, and it was just powerful. It was just powerful. Just plain, just plain powerful. And just it was plain powerful. It just was God. It was God. That's, it was not us. It was that's right. God. People's mouth dropped open. It was like, oh my goodness. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, like like me today, I've been praising God and worshiping God. I feel good now, you. I feel good. Okay, when you start praising God, let the high praises go. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. So no matter what's happening in your life or in your family, you start praising God. Don't don't join them in their gloom and doom and 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 and, and, and grieving. Grieving has its place, but don't stay in grief. You turn the you flip the script, flick your bick, okay? Amen. Get your pal cowbell. Dun, 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 Pat your feet. Pat your feet. If you got a foot, pat it. And when your foot's off the ground, you hit your hand. Pat, mm, pat, mm, pat, mm, pat. Mm. Oh, I got some rhythm. I got rhythm. Pat, pat, mm, pat, mm, pat. Mm. You can't do that, Ryan. You're driving, Ryan. You stay. Keep your hands on the wheel. But the rest of you, you can, you can send up some praises unto the Lord. You can play some music unto the Lord. And then, if you don't have an instrument, you can slap your thigh. And and I'm just telling you how old school used to worship God. And see, and old school is still in me. Okay, you know I don't need a big old band or praise team, and interpretive dancers, and all this. You know, spend a whole lot of money for praise team. Okay, I can just uh, uh, I, I'll just make, I can make my own music, or I can always put on one of my, my one of my CDs, one of my songs by my friend Kevin Wilson, Kevin Wilson from from London, Kentucky. Praise God. Okay, well, let's finish up with. Uh, David's mighty men, and then the census in Israel. When you look at chapter 23, you'll see his mighty men, and it names a whole lot of them. And um, genealogies yeah. are very important, ladies and gentlemen. Genealogies are very important in tracking history, and David's mighty men are, are mentioned. And look at the very bottom of his of the list of mighty men, verse thirty nine. Uriah the Hittite. Uriah the Hittite. He's mentioned. Even though David had sinned and, and put had Uriah the Hittite put to death, Uriah the Hittite was called a mighty man of David's army. And then chapter twenty four and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Okay, so when you look at this, you say, Well, well God told David to go and number Israel. But no, that, that pronoun he 
in that third sentence, in that third line. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David. He means Satan moved David to say, go, number Israel and Judah. Satan orchestrated that. For the king said to David, to Joab, the captain of the host which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel. From Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And God already told him, don't do that. And Joab said unto the king, now the Lord thy God add unto the people how many soever they be, an hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. God told them not to do it, and they did it. Verse 10, And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And so God sent Gad, the prophet. Gad is one of the co-authors of First and Second Samuel. Samuel, Gad, David, and there's a fourth one. Escape me at this particular time. Okay. Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God gave, through Gad, Three choices for David. Number one, seven years of famine in the land. Number two, three months fleeing from your enemies. Or number three, three days of pestilence in the land. Verse 14, And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now to the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the, of the evil. You can, can you see the angel of the Lord stretching out his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy Jerusalem? And God caused the angel to cease his stretching and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now in thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. We've got to ask the angel of the Lord to, we've got to ask God to stop the angel of the Lord from stretching out his hand through this coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen. This coronavirus that has a lot of people scared, a lot of people uh, getting sick. Um, I, I believe the coronavirus is one of the many plagues, one of the many plagues that are going to come upon the nations. Put an S on nation, upon the nations. I believe uh, God is letting us know, hey, I'm not pleased with people. And, and, and when he's not pleased with people, he permits these things to happen. But we've got to cry out unto the Lord and ask God to spare the people and uh, have mercy on us. Okay. And um, David, look at verse 17. David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. David intercede for the people. He interceded for the people. These people haven't done anything. I did it, Lord. Have mercy on us. And then God spoke to Gad, and Gad told David, Go and buy the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. And there you raise up uh, uh and then do sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay? And uh, so Arona wanted to give the land to David, but David said, no, no, no. How can I make sacrifice to the Lord? How can I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord of that which did not cost me anything? Verse 24, so David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Verse 25, and we close with this. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. David purchased that land, eight acres, 
and God stayed the plague. He halted the plague. And later, that same ground became the land upon which Solomon built the temple. And that ground is waiting today for the renewed temple, the new temple to be built. Father, we thank you for your word. We praise you for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is inspiring and encouraging. Your word is life. And we thank you that we get joy when we read and study your word. Bless all the people, Lord. Help us to stay in your word. You said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, bless God. Okay, so we're going to end our recording. Those of you who joined us, Christy Carpenter, uh, Christina, and many others, Tyrone, and many others, we missed you all and pray that God will bless you and let us continue fellowshipping one with another. And if you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email or a text message.